Good morning. Today I want to talk about the subject, don't be afraid of failing. Let's start by looking at some Bible strategies for overcoming the fear of failure. Number one, make sure that your vision and your values line up. The rise and fall of King Uzziah are told in these words from 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verses 1 through 21. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in place of his father, Amaziah. He was the one who built Elath and restored it to Judah after Amaziah rested with his ancestors. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 52 years. His mother's name was Jecoliah, and she was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Amaziah had done. He sought God during the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the fear of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God gave him success. He went to war against the Philistines and broke down the walls of Gath, Jabna, and Ashdod. He then rebuilt towns near Ashdod and elsewhere among the Philistines. God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabs who lived in Gerbal and against the Meonites. The Ammonites brought tribute to Uzziah, and his fame spread as far as the border of Egypt because he had become very powerful. Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, at the valley gate, and at the angle of the wall, and he fortified them. He also built towers in the wilderness and dug many cisterns because he had much livestock in the foothills and in the plain. He had people working his fields and vineyards in the hills and in the fertile lands, for he loved the soil. Uzziah had a well-trained army, ready to go out by divisions, according to their numbers as mustered by Giel, the secretary, and Maaseiah, the officer under the direction of Hananiah, one of the royal officials. The total number of family leaders over the fighting men was 2,600. Under their command was an army of 307,500 men, trained for war, a powerful force to support the king against his enemies. Uzziah provided shields, spears, helmets, coats of armor, bows, and slingshots for the entire army. In Jerusalem, he made devices invented for use on the towers and on the corner defenses so that soldiers could shoot arrows and hurl large stones from the walls. His fame spread far and wide, for he was greatly helped until he became powerful. But after Uzziah became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. He was unfaithful to the Lord his God and entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Azariah, the priest, with 80 other courageous priests of the Lord, followed him in. They confronted King Uzziah and said, It is not right for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord. That is for the priests, the descendants of Aaron, who have been consecrated to burn incense. Leave the sanctuary, for you have been unfaithful, and you will not be honored by the Lord God. Uzziah, who had a censer in his hand, ready to burn incense, became angry. And while he was raging at the priests in their presence, before the incense altar in the Lord's temple, leprosy broke out on his forehead. When Azariah the chief priest and all the other priests looked at him, they saw that he had leprosy on his forehead, so they hurried him out. Indeed, he himself was eager to leave, because the Lord had afflicted him. King Uzziah had leprosy until the day he died. He lived in a separate house, leprous and banned from the temple of the Lord. Jotham, his son, had charge of the palace and governed the people of the land. <coughs> so, as we look at the story, Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for 52 years. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He sought God during the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the fear of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God gave him success. But after 
Uzziah became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. He was unfaithful to the Lord his God. The lesson here is clear. Success can be intoxicating. And intoxicated people don't think clearly. And they end up getting into all kinds of trouble. So be sure that your vision is in line with your core values. Stay in balance. Define success based on God's word rather than the ego-driven systems of the world. For example, receiving public recognition and praise for your accomplishments while your family life is a mess is not success. And sacrificing your integrity for profit and promotion is the worst deal you will ever make. Secondly, learn from your failures and mistakes. Failure is not fatal. Neither does it define who you are. It is the result of your actions, but not the measure of your worthiness. Thomas Edison once said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Humbly view your mistakes as tuition paid on your education, and then grow wiser and keep moving forward. Another step in overcoming the fear of failure is to pursue your God-given purpose in life. To truly succeed at something, you must have a passion for it. And God will not only reveal to you his purpose, he will give you a passion to pursue it. The Apostle Paul had the gift, the education, and the connections to pursue a number of different careers. But he wrote in 1 Corinthians 9.16, For when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, since I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. What do you feel passionately about? Study it. It's a clue to your destiny. Another step is this. Ask yourself these three questions. Number one, what's the worst that can happen if I don't succeed? After all, you will still have God, your talents, your family, and other opportunities. Secondly, has this ever been done before? Even if not, so what? And third, is this fear a signal that I don't have the proper people, processes, or plans in place to succeed at this time? Then ask the really big question. What are the benefits I will enjoy if I succeed? Have a can-do attitude. Look your fear in the face and boldly assert the words of Philippians 4.13. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Don't let the familiarity of this scripture cause you to recite it by rote. Say it out loud. Really absorb the words. Get them into your spirit. Know that Christ strengthens you to succeed for the glory of God. And know that when he guides you, he provides you with all that you need to succeed in whatever he has called you to do. And finally, as we wrap this up, let's take a look at the disciple Peter. The Bible tells this story in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, in verses 22 through 31. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. And later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Peter says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. So Jesus does. He says, come on. Peter got out of the boat. He walked on the water. 
and he came toward Jesus. How cool is that? But what happened next? He saw the wind, and fear set in, and he went under, crying, Lord, save me. And Jesus did so immediately. When you know that you have prayed, prepared, and planned, you must step out and do it. It's normal to experience fear when you attempt something that you've never done before. Perhaps you've read the story of Peter's attempt to walk on the water and judged him a failure. But that's not so. First, Peter gets an A for being willing to leave his safety zone and do what he had never done before. Secondly, he experienced the exhilaration of actually walking on water, if only for a fleeting moment. No other disciple could boast of that. And third, he learned a valuable lesson. Focusing on Jesus rather than your circumstances is essential when attempting the impossible. Fourth, he recognized that his survival depended solely on Jesus. And in his time of need, Jesus reached out his hand and got him. Jesus didn't condemn Peter for failing. He just told him he needed to develop greater faith. God won't let you drown in your mistakes. As long as you keep trusting him, he will keep working with you until you succeed. He is your heavenly father, and your success is his success. And that's the word for you today. Just a reminder that today is the last day of school for our students here in St. John's County. So as we begin the summer, be sure to look out for students as you drive through our community. And we invite you to join us Sunday morning at 9 or 11 a.m. for worship at the Village Church next to Walgreens on Pasetti Road in the World Golf Village. And if you are out traveling this Memorial Day weekend, be sure to join us on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel at the Village Church at World Golf Village where you can worship with us anytime. Have a safe Memorial Day weekend, and I'll be back on Monday morning with more from The Word For You today.